All right, what is going on guys? I'm off on this beautiful Wednesday. Taking you guys to a very special shoot today. Today we're photographing a 5,000 square feet house. 5,000, that's huge. And it's also located in the heart of Toronto. I wonder how long I'm gonna take to get all the pictures I need. Today is absolutely gorgeous, man. Oh my God, I love the drive so far. You see the scenery, man, just anywhere. Anywhere you point the camera, it just... Mm. All right, so we just arrived, and holy jeez, this place is huge. So I just walked around the whole property to get an idea of what shot I want for certain floors. It's always a good habit to walk around and just take a look at your surrounding before you take your camera out. And it is especially true for real estate photography. Um, I'm thinking doing the exteriors first because right now the light is pretty, it's pretty good. As we approach noon, the light will be a bit more harsh. It will be a bit more harder to capture um, the shadow and the bright part, especially with my Mavic Mini doesn't have the best dynamic range, so there are going to be some sacrifices later. So let's do the exterior first. All right, step two is to turn on all the lights. There's a lot of lights here. Mini, so hopefully everything turns out well because I do really want some drone shots for this house. <sighs> oh, I must say, climbing all of those stairs definitely is a cardio workout. I actually just remembered that house right there. I photographed that house last year. Remember the cherry leaves, that roof, that pool? It's 100% that house right there. That's crazy, two houses back to back. Oh my God. So, finished the basement, finished the third floor, and now just the main floor, second floor, and exterior, and I'm done. Even though this property is heavily staged, there are still things you know I have to work on the photographer to make sure every single picture is perfect. For example, things like this. So I either gotta fix that or Photoshop it in post processing. And then sometimes things like this, wire sticking out. So what I do is just take one of those and then and then wrap the wire around it. And just put it behind the table so you don't see it in a photo and that's it and then things like those broken drawers i guess like one shoot this bathroom i don't want to shoot like this way i want to shoot like this way so it doesn't show the broken drawer or actually it's pretty easy to photoshop that so post-processing works too just these little things you got to pay attention to when you do real estate photography especially for a house like this where every little detail matters all right, one more tip is to shoot pictures in bracket. I mean, shoot raw mode in bracket. Should be shooting raw, by the way, not JPEGs. Flexibility of overriding that shadow details. So always, for bright rooms like this, with a lot of windows, a lot of shadows, you want to switch to bracket. So right now I'm doing three images of uh, two EV. So basically one is normal exposure, and one is like this, 
two stops over and the third shot is uh, two stops under exposed. So I'll expose the shadow detail in the highlight detail so I don't lose any information when I deliver to my clients. Yay. So on this roll canal lens, since it's a manual lens, so I gotta focus every single time to make sure everything's in focus. And then usually I'm using f4, f5.6, like this range. Sometimes f8, but number 2.8 because it's not as sharp. I find that f5.6-ish f-stop is probably the sharpest to get out of this lens. And then look at this picture. Awesome. All right, basement, third floor, second floor all done. It's the main floor and exteriors. I spent two hours and I photographed three levels of this property. But this level of the property, the main floor is probably the hardest, man. Kitchen's nice, but it's huge. The living room's also huge. There's like three dining rooms, man. On top of that, there's a back patio. So let's keep working. We're done, now the kitchen. All right, a little bit of unfortunate news. Looks like it's stuck on 40% for the last hour. This is also the third time trying to update. Looks like no drone shots today. Boo. Man, look how nice this backyard patio is. Oh my lord. This place is amazing. drone doesn't work today so I came up with a solution I'm gonna extend my tripod fully and go into time-lapse mode every second I'm gonna take a picture and I'm gonna hold it up as high as I can let's see how it is all right looks like lifting up my tripod as a drone works out perfectly. I got the shot I wanted. Now, I could go higher with the drone, but honestly, I don't think it will look that good. It's also a blessing that this property is on a little bit of an uphill, so the drone doesn't need to go that high. My tripod doesn't have to go that high. So yeah, since now the exterior here of the house is done, the interior is all done, every floor is done. The last step is to get some detail shots of the decoration or any house features, for example, some fireplace or for example, a jacuzzi or a backyard patio, like other examples like a building fridge maybe even, you know? Um, so we'll walk around again and get all the detail shots and also don't forget to turn off the lights and put everything back in place. They will appreciate it a lot. Right, so for detail shots, I don't need the wide angle anymore. I always use my 2875 from Tamra. So I can zoom in whenever it wants and then get those detail shots with a telephoto anytime it wants to. It's definitely one of the more versatile lenses there are. If you pick up one lens, I think this can be it. It does everything it needs. All right, so I turned all the lights off and checked off every picture that I need. Time to say goodbye to this beautiful place. Oh my God. I still can't believe how big this place is. Oh, one thing. I can't seem to find the light switch for those lights. 
I'm not sure if uh, I turn the lights on for this place or not, but... I have no idea where the light switch is. Maybe it's one of those books. Ooh, who knows? Maybe it's a booby trap. Yeah, but sorry for those lights. I don't know what to do with them. Time to say goodbye, lights are closed, blinds are done, everything's locked. Make sure that door is locked. Ooh, it's a pretty expensive place to be broken into. Nice. Got to miss this place. Job all done. But look at this ridiculous traffic, man. I hate traffic so much, but it is what it is. All right, so I was saying the second stop for the day is actually Henry's. I bought a camera insert for my Wonder 21 liter backpack. It says it fits the 21 liters, but it does not fit. I don't know what happened. I'll ask them if I can have a refund or if they can actually put it in for me. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Who knows? If they can't, then there's something wrong with the user. So that's what I gotta do. That wasn't cheap at all, man. If you're wondering what it is, it's the Pro Camera Cube user. So right now at the Central Camera Cube, it only goes about halfway up the bag and it doesn't fit everything that I want. But with the Pro Camera Cube, it actually extends to the full length of the bag. I can put a lot more a lot more equipment in the back. Man, I haven't drove down Avenue Road in a very long time. This bring back memories. I actually went to high school with her, that's why. The traffic, I'm gonna do a really, really weird turn. I'm gonna go right and then do a U-turn. Hopefully it works. We'll see. It looks like it works. The U-turn works. Oh my god. I was waiting for like probably three lights and probably like two cars moved over. So this is a very clutch move. Tips on photography and driving Toronto. Probably explain it better with a visual representation. So this is my Wonder backpack, 21 liter, very nice looking backpack. I bought insert like this, but it doesn't fit in here for some reason. It's like a little bit too big. It's the correct size. It says Wonder 21. So, so I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna go to Henry's and ask them about why this product doesn't fit the bag, and if it doesn't fit, I'm gonna return it. Unfortunately kind of sucks. Okay, so I'll be back. All right, turns out that cube is for the version two of my bag. Kind of sucks. And uh, Henry's don't have a partnership with Wonder anymore, so I got to order from the US website and have to go through all the tax and shipping, which is going to be annoying because I really like their bag. So the cube right now is a bit small. All right, oh well. Time to go home. Actually, before going home, Jollibee! Oh my god, I love Jollibee. I might, I might just buy Jollibee and go home. That oil, get all that protein from those fried chickens. Yeah, that's my dinner plan. All right, just got some Jollibees. Sounds so good, I can't wait to eat. Just, just nom the whole thing. Oh my god. So I'm going to end the video here. So hopefully guys, you learned something. Hope you guys enjoy the video. And uh, yeah, more is gonna come. Take care.